Patient Assessment Management Trauma Skill. In this skill, you will have 10 minutes to perform your assessment and voice treat all conditions and injuries discovered. You should conduct your assessment as you would in the field, including communicating with your simulated patient. You may remove the simulated patient's clothing down to his or her shorts or swimsuit if you feel it is necessary. As you progress through this skill, you should state everything you are assessing. Specific clinical information not obtainable by visual or physical inspection, for example, blood pressure, will be given to you only when you demonstrate how you would normally obtain the information in the field. You may assume that you have two partners working with you who are trained to your level of care. They will correctly perform the verbal treatments you indicate necessary. I will acknowledge your treatments and may ask you for additional information if clarification is needed. Do you have any questions? I do not. You may begin this go. Okay. Is size on my scene safe? Yes, it is. And do I have any dispatch information? You were dispatched to a shooting victim. Okay, so my mechanism of injury is going to be a shooting. Uh, I'm going to assess the number of patients. This is this my only patient? Yes, it is. I'm going to call for immediate uh, ALS backup, and okay. I'd like one of my partners to hold C spine. Noted. Okay. As I walk up to the patient, uh, I'm going to make a general impression. I have a mid 20s male lying supine on the ground after a parent gunshot wound. I'm going to assess a level of consciousness. As I walk up to the patient, do they acknowledge me? No, they do not. I'm going to say, Sir, can you hear me? No acknowledgement. I'm going to check for painful stimuli by pinching the trap. No response. Patient's unresponsive. I immediately assess for any life threats. Take the patient's clothing. You notice a upper right sided chest bleeding with some air escaping. Okay, I'm going to classify that as a sucking chest wound. I'm going to immediately cover it with a gloved hand and then take an occlusive dressing and take, apply that and tape it on three sides. Is this one secure? It is secure. Do I see any other, any other life threats? You do not. Do I see any pool of blood when I read the patient? No, you do not. Okay. I'm going to assess the patient's airway. I'm going to open up the patient's airway using the draw thrust and look inside and see if there's any obstructions. Airway is patent. Okay, patient unresponsive, doesn't have control over his airway, so I'm going to secure his airway with an OPA. Patient the accepts airway. the OPA. No gag reflex? No. Okay. I'm going to go down and assess the patient's breathing rate, rhythm, and quality. He has uh, chest rise and fall, however, if they're not equal. Right side's a little diminished. Okay, do I have a rate? Uh, rate is a little bit fast. Okay. I'm going to secure this with a non breather hooked up to 15 liters, 100% of oxygen. Is my O2 therapy adequate? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to assess the patient's pulse for rate, rhythm, and quality. Rapid and weak. Rapid and weak. I'm going to assess the patient's skin color, temperature, and condition. Pale, cool, and clammy. Pale, cool, and clammy. This patient's exhibiting signs of shock. I'm already treating with the oxygen. I'm also going to cover him up and, set and, treat and maintain any body heat. Do I see any other, any other bleeding? No, you do not. Okay. I'm going to deem this patient as a high priority patient. At this point, I'm going to send one of my partners to obtain a sample history, if one could be obtained. And I'm going to take a baseline set of vital signs. His blood pressure is 108 over 82. Blood pressure is 108 over 82. <clears throat> Check the pulse. Uh, pulse rate is 120. Pulse is 120. And respiratory rhythm quality? 24. 24. At this time, I'm going to start my secondary trauma assessment. During this assessment, I'm going to be assessing for DCAP BTLS. That is deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, penetrations, burns, tenderness, lacerations, and swelling. Can I use that acronym from now on? Yes. I'm going to start at the patient's head, checking the cranium for any DCAP BTLS, checking the orbitals, the cheekbones, checking the maxilla and mandible, checking the eyes using a pet light, checking for pearl, checking the ears for any CSF or bleeding, checking the nose for any CSF or bleeding, reassessing the airway, making sure it's open and maintained, moving down to the patient's neck. Checking the back of the cervical spine for any step offs. Checking the jugular veins for any distension. Checking the trachea, seeing if it's midline. Checking the top of the shoulders. After that, I'm going to secure the patient's C spine using a cervical collar after appropriately me measuring. Moving down to the patient's chest, I'm going to inspect for any DCAP BTLS. Second so chest one's still secure. Checking the sternum in a chopping motion. Also taking lung sounds. 
you notice on the right side, you have slightly diminished lung sounds. Right side has diminished lung sounds. Moving the patient's abdomen, palpating for indistension, rigidity, and tenderness in all four quadrants. Assessing the bladder. Assessing the patient's pelvis, pushing in and down. Doing a general sweep, checking for any priapism, uh, bleeding, or incontinency. Checking the patient's legs for any decap ETLS. Checking PMS, pulse. Pulse present. Pulse present, sir, can you wiggle your toes? No reaction. Can you feel this? No reaction. Patient's other leg, any decap ETLS. It was small laceration on that lower leg. Small laceration. <clears throat> Check the PMS, pulse. Pulse present. Sir, can you wiggle your toes? No reaction. Can you feel this? No response. Sir, check it for any TKF ETLS. Check for pulse. Pulse present. Squeeze my hand. No reaction. Can you feel this? No reaction. TKF ETLS. PMS, pulse. Pulse present. Squeeze my hand. No response. Can you feel this? No response. At this time, it's time to roll the patient onto a backboard. Uh, seeing that this is a sucking chest wound, we may have diminished lung sounds on this side. I'm going to choose to roll him on the affected side. This way I don't compromise the good luck. So with myself and another partner, and then my other partner come on this side. Other partner is holding C-spine. We're going to interlock arms on this side. And then on C-spine's count, we're going to roll him. One, two, three. Patient's roll. Checking the back cervical spine for any decap BTLS. Checking the buttocks for any condensate bleeding. <clears throat> After that, we're going to answer the backboard on this side. And on C-spine scalp, we're rolling back onto the backboard. One, two, three. <clears throat> we're going to secure them to the backboard, middle, bottom, top ones if we have them, and then head beating last. After this, we're going to reassess for PMS in all four extremities. At this point, we're transporting. I'm going to reassess this patient every five minutes because he's critical. At this time, I can address the secondary wound to the lower leg. And then once the either the paramedic gets there or we get to the hospital and I give a report to them, I'll give a proper report and I've completed the station.